If you would like to use HitFilm for Express to make a documentary, uh, here are some useful tips for you. First of all, how I would start out is by making a folder to organize all of your pictures and videos and sound files. So I'll do that in uh, the computer menu. On our lab computers, we're going to use the C drive. On the Studio 503 computers, you'll see local disk E. That's where you're going to want to store uh, all the videos at. So I'll go in there. I'll make a new folder. I'll do make a folder for me. And in this folder, C drive or E drive, that's where I'll store all my information. So uh, let's see. Let me get a couple images here. Let's do, um, if I was doing something on the Apollo space program. All right, so if I'm getting images, one thing um, that you need to be aware of is the size of your screen or the size of an HD video is uh, 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high. So if I look at any image, the closer I get to that or higher, uh, the better it's going to look in my video. So this is 2700 by 2700, that would look good. This one, it's going to look blurry and pixelated when I blow it up. So um, keep it, try to get it really close to 1920 by 1080 or higher. So let's see, I would like to choose um, this one. In fact, okay, so I see it's not 1920 by 1080. I'm doing that on purpose. I want to show you uh, how that'll work. But uh, let's see. So I'm going to click on this picture and then right click and save image as. Now remember you probably have to cite these in some form so make sure to do that but I'm going to assume you know how to do that elsewhere. I'm not going to make that a part of this video. So I'll save image as. I will find my C or E drive folder and save it in there. Make sure it's a file name that I remember what it is. Um, in fact I'm going to rename this. Let's see. I want to say this is Apollo 16 based on the context clues I, I know from this. So I'm going to do Apollo 16. All right. So let me get a couple more images. I'll get, uh, this is Buzz Aldrin here. So wait till that image loads. There we go. Save that. Aldrin Apollo 11. That works. Um, okay. This is an Apollo spacecraft. Yeah, I'll choose this one too. It's not 1920 by 1080, but it's an opportunity for me to show you how that'll work. So, there's that. Why do they call it Apollo 3? That's not Apollo 3. Um, ooh, I like this one. Oh, there we go. Saturn V on the launch pad. I'll take that one. Where'd it go? There we are. All right, save image as. Good. All right, and that's above 1920 by 1080. So I got a good uh, series of images here. Good. All right, so when I go into Hit Film, start a new project. And as usual in this class, or in our labs, wait for Hit Film to load there. All right, uh, I usually just like to choose the third option from the top that matches the cameras, that matches how things like to be exported. So third option from the top here, 1920 by 1080, 29.97 frames per second, and start editing. And when I'm in my editor, I'll go ahead and import all of my clips, or all of my videos, pictures, sorry, import all my pictures. Go to C drive, Dupchuck documentary, All right, and now they're all in here. Okay, don't do this. This is a common mistake people make. They just start dragging their clips onto the timeline. Now, this causes a problem. Sometimes what this does is it changes the size of the video project. It didn't do that for me, but sometimes it does that. But also, this is just a static picture, and it's not even the whole picture. Um, this is pretty boring. So. We're going to make it more exciting. We're going to put effects into it. So I'm going to come to New Composite Shot. And choose my duration. So why don't I start with just like a 30-second clip here. 
Uh, so I'll just, maybe I'll call this scene one. You call it something that makes sense to you. 1920 by 1080, 29.97 frames per second. And this is a 30 second clip here. This works in hours, minutes, seconds, frames. So 30 second clip. All right, press OK. And now you see I have my editor and my scene one composite shot. So let me start with my first picture. Here's my picture of Buzz Aldrin. All right. I'm going to make this go for eight seconds. Right now, whenever I drag in a picture, it automatically makes the picture go the full duration of my composite shot. So this video is going to play for 30 seconds. Um, I don't want that. So I'm going to make it go eight seconds. So I'll bring my playhead to eight seconds. Then I can slice the layer, boom, and delete that layer. Okay. Now, it's still static though, let's make it a little more exciting. What if I were to start here um, and zoom out to show the full picture as I go? All right, that means we have to learn something called keyframing. So, what I do here is, here I'm gonna show you how I did this. I'm gonna drill down, boom. I'm gonna open up my transform menu and I get a bunch of things that I can mess with here. To zoom out, I'm going to mess with the scale. So if I turn on the scale keyframes, see how it added a keyframe right there. That means at this frame, it's going to be at 100% of its size. Now I'm going to come out to 5 seconds, and as I zoom out here, see how it added a keyframe there? So I'm going to come out to however far I want to zoom out. I'm going to zoom out this far, and you'll see why. But anyway, it means at this frame, it's going to be this size. And as I come back, you see how it plays. How it zooms out like that. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. I can navigate by keyframes up here. So this is forward and back. And then this middle one here is to insert a keyframe or get rid of it. All right, now let's see. So I'm gonna to come to that keyframe. Now I'm gonna to go to my position though, and I have my x-axis and my y-axis position. So if I move down my y-axis, my picture's going to end there. Uh-oh, no keyframes. Well, I forgot to turn my keyframe on, so turn it on, boom, added a keyframe there, but I have to go back to my beginning and give it my starting point. So I'll just give it a starting point of zero. There we go, added my keyframe in. And now, that's what that looks like. One other trick that I like to do is I like to turn these last ones into what are called smooth keyframes. So this right there, uh, or sorry, smooth in, or smooth. I'm gonna choose that one. So what it's going to do here, so it converted it to smooth. Actually, let me uh, go back. Watch what happens. When it gets to this keyframe, it just abruptly stops moving. Okay? Boom. It just abruptly stopped. So if I convert those keyframes to smooth, then it will gradually come to a stop as it approaches that keyframe. See, that was much nicer. It just kind of gradually came to a stop. All right. So then... I'm done with Buzz. I'm going to come to, where's that really small picture I had? Here we go. I'm going to come to my Apollo spaceship next. And I'm going to overlap it. And you'll see why in a second. All right, but as you look here, see how that picture doesn't take up the full screen? Well, here's why. My screen is 1920 wide by 1080 tall. This picture is 400 wide by 404 tall, so it doesn't take up the full screen. I can come into my transformation, and I can scale it up. It's going to look a little more blurry and pixelated because I didn't start from being close to HD resolution, but it might work for you. I could also rotate it. Let's see. I'm going to rotate it like this because that's the way I think it should look. 90 
degrees. Okay, so now, let's see, I don't want to keyframe this. You might choose to, I'm choosing not to. I'm going to start at the beginning, um, and I'm going to make my position here. First keyframe, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, about five seconds in there. Last keyframe. Smooth in. Go about another two, three seconds. Slice. Boom. Okay. So now I have this. Okay, that's a good start. It doesn't look very polished though. Uh, how when we get here, how my spacecraft abruptly comes on and Buzz abruptly disappears. So here's what I'm going to do. That this is working with um, opacity. Opacity is transparency. So if I come here to my Apollo, actually I'm going to come to the frame where Buzz leaves. All right. That's the frame where I want my ship to be at 100% opacity. And I'm going to come to the first frame of my ship, and I'm going to turn it down to 0% opacity. Now I get that. Let me back it up a little bit more. So you see how the ship fades in. Okay, that's nice. One more thing, I'm going to come to Buzz, and as my ship starts to fade in, I'm going to come down to Buzz. He's going to be at 100%, and then at the end of this clip, he's going to be at 0%. So now, i got a cool thing where Buzz is going to fade out, and my ship will fade in. That looks much nicer. Okay. One more cool thing. Let's see. Now this is going to advanced level. I think if you if you stuck like this the whole time, just by messing with your um, size, your position, and your opacity, so that you pretty much always have objects in motion, that looks really professional. You watch a lot of documentaries, that's how, that's how things work. And you can, there's no reason you can't add video clips. Let me see if I can just find a random clip on my computer somewhere. Uh, let's see. Here's a clip the group is doing. Okay, no reason I can't add video clips into here. That's strange. Turn it off. Yes, we can get it on. Okay, and have video clips playing. Uh, if I wanted to, I could put. Um, let's see, I could put pictures on top of video clips. Yes, we so can I end up with level. like yes, we can. Yeah, we can. that. Okay, that's what composite shots are for. Composite shots are for overlapping, stacking layers, things like that. So, let me remove that. Another thing you can do is, let me find a music file. Um, again, I'm just finding a random music file. You'd probably have music in your folder somewhere. But, let's see. If you find a music file, drag your music file down onto the bottom layer. And that way you can help time your, your clips up with your music file. Also, if you have a sound file that's a, a voiceover, you've recorded some dialogue, that would work, that would work there too. Okay, and you can mess with the uh, volume of your music file. A little better. When it comes to sound, I like to keep the peak sound levels between 0 and negative 6. That's the ideal range there that you want to keep your sound files. Okay, now, an advanced level edit here. This would look really cool um, if your judges are judging you on uh, technical quality. This would look really cool. What I'm going to do here with him is, first let me scale him up so he takes the full screen. Okay. Now. I'm going to duplicate him, duplicate, and on my top layer, I'm going to mask out my astronaut. So I click the mask tool, I'm going to go into masks, and I'm just going to draw an outline around him. 
And I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this. Let's see. Boom, boom, boom. All right, where this might be useful is if you're talking about a person. So like I'm talking about this astronaut. I'm not going to bet money on it, but I bet this astronaut's name is Jim Irwin because I'm a geek and I know that stuff. All right, so now that I've masked him, uh, here's why this is two layers. So my top layer uh, has the mask drawn around it. When I mask something, that means this is the only part of the layer I want to have showing. So if I hide my second, my second layer, boom, you see it's just my astronaut now, right? Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transform my scale. So my thing's going to come in and add an initial keyframe there and over the course of a couple seconds I'm just going to scale up my astronaut. Boom. Now watch this. Okay, so that's kind of an, ad an advanced level thing that you could try to do. Um, I could also maybe, let's see, maybe at the same time, I'm just playing here. Maybe I can scale down my background picture. Transform, let's see, scale. Not too much, just a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna play here. You watch the video, you don't have to watch the rest of this. I'm just gonna play. Let's see, I'm gonna come to transform, opacity. I'm gonna make him fade in. I'm gonna make all this fade in. So we're gonna go 0%, 100%. I'm gonna copy this line onto here. Okay. So now this fades in, and now after we come here, I'm going to cut my background layer, let's see, slice, get rid of that, and now I just have my astronaut, and I'm going to do my rotation, boom, 0%, and now I'm going to do or I'm going to, let's see, location and position. All right, so now here, I'm going to just kind of make him fly off the screen. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Boom, and then my rotation. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that looked cool. So there's my Apollo. All right. The main thing is, don't get discouraged by the fact that this looks so easy for me. Uh, I've been messing with keyframes a long time, but once you understand keyframes and how to manipulate keyframes and how that controls how objects appear and move and all of that, then uh, it becomes a lot easier for you. So my advice is just keep messing with the keyframes until you figure out what they do and uh, use that to apply it to your videos to add kind of another level of professionalism. And that should do it.